Hi guys. It is Wednesday, 12 p.m. That means we're doing a Facebook Live. I do a Facebook Live here every Wednesday. I started doing this on my Fancy Scientist page. If you don't know me, I am Dr. Stephanie Shuttler. I am a wildlife biologist, and I started doing these Facebook Lives as an open Q&A session and I get a lot of different questions, so I thought it would be a good idea to do them live, do a question a week. So if you have a question, you can submit it, you can just send it to me, either commenting here on Facebook or sending me an email or anything on social media, I check it all. So if you're here live, say hi in the comments, say your name, I like to get to know every single one of you. Okay, so today, we are answering the question, or I, not we, <laughs> am I too old? And this question came up from several people and um, I dealt with this more recently with talking with somebody in depth and they, they felt that their age was holding them back. So are you too old to start a career in wildlife biology? And when I am saying old, I do not really mean old in terms of what people normally think of as old. So, and this is not my definition of old, this is what people are saying to me, but, but people who are in their late 20s, 30s, maybe 40s, and they either are not happy in the career that they have now and wanna transition, or maybe graduated, took, took a couple of years off, whatever. So we're not talking about like old by any means. But before I specifically answer that question, what I wanna say is that one of the biggest mistakes that aspiring wildlife biologists do is that they really focus on the education side of things. And they think that wildlife biology is really this linear process that you go to college. A lot of people stop there and think that that's enough. And for some jobs, it is enough. A lot of people then go on to get their master's and their PhD. And, and often what happens in graduate school is we're sort of pushed into this, this next step, that this is the way to do it but it's not the best way. And a lot of aspiring wildlife biologists, they also think about not just the degree programs, but that they need certain type of education, that they need a certain number of courses. And I even see a lot of them list courses on their um, resume. So if you're older in your 20s, in your late 20s, in your 30s, and you're thinking that maybe it's too late for me, that there's going to be classrooms full of young students and I'm gonna feel out of place. Well, they may feel a little bit of that way in undergrad, but I'm gonna track back to that. But that's a really big mistake for graduate school at least for research-based programs, which is what I did, I did a PhD, um, and we did have master's students, but they were research-based, so they were doing a, a thesis, so answering research questions. And when you are in graduate school in a research program, it's really not like school. It's really like work. And you actually get paid a stipend too. So you, um, depending on how much you get paid and where you go, you make, make a living off of it. Some schools pay very little and some departments pay very little at the University of Missouri. At the time we were paid 21,000, which um, is, is not that much, but actually in Columbia, Missouri, it was a college town and um, that 21,000 went really far. So when you're in graduate school, you don't feel like you're in school. You feel like you're in job in a job. And even the courses that you take, really, they, they're, they're different in that, um, now it varies by school. Some schools do have like more vigorous coursework, but in general, it's much more like meeting, discussing, working on your research. Um, so if you have a final project, you, um, might have to do um, 
something that's involved with your course. So like, I don't know, maybe like a paper review, a literature review, but it usually involves your project because they want you to finish your degree. They want you to work on your research. So there are classes where you have tests and stuff like that, but it is, it is pretty rare. Usually most of your courses are you meet, discuss, and read a lot of papers. And the courses are almost like, kind of like you need to get them out of the way. So you do your courses the first two years, um, I guess for your master's, that's most of your research. And this is the US too. I think that, I think that England um, and the, um, Europe is different, but here in the US, this is what it's like, and ours are much longer. But the courses are kind of like auxiliary. It's more about your research. So you're not really studying, you're, you're not like taking exams like you are in undergrad. So focusing on education in this way is really the wrong way to, to look at wildlife biology careers. And I promise you that if you focus only on education, you will have a hard time landing a job. So why is this? Well, for one, there's just so many people that have wildlife biology degrees now. And this, of course, is especially true at the bachelor's level um, because that is the, the, the shortest one to get. Most people now in the US or a lot of people in the US go to college. So there's a lot of people with bachelor's degrees and there's even a lot of people now with masters and even a lot of people with PhDs. So what really makes people stand out is experience that that's really what i found to be important in this career and being older can actually work towards your advantage and for graduate school i would even say that being young can work against you because you can be seen for, for applying to graduate school and getting in because you can be seen as being very new what we call very be, being very green so when i graduated from college i took off three years and i did three different internships i did one in the bureau of land management one at disney world and one in kenya and they're all more or less research based the one in kenya was more study abroad um, but i was able to do research there these experiences, they were paid and therefore they were like jobs. Even if you have unpaid internships, a lot of times they're very similar to jobs and just internships more are meant to have more mentoring. So these internships, this experience, it gave me an advantage when going to graduate school and professors could see that I was experienced, that I had some research under my belt. And I know that if I applied to graduate school immediately after undergrad, I would not have been as competitive and I probably wouldn't have gotten in. Even though I did do some volunteering in a lab my last year, I didn't really figure out what I wanted to do until my late in my junior year. So, so I didn't have all that much experience. So going to graduate school, you absolutely, I would wait a couple of years after you graduate. If, if, you're, if you did the normal plan, if you did, um, you know, you got your wildlife degree and or biology degree, and you're thinking about going to graduate school, yes, having that experience, being older is actually an advantage. So it's 100% still doable. It's even advantageous. And in graduate school, I, so I started when I was around 25, and I was actually um, one of the younger students. Most of the students in our department were in their late 20s. I would say even most were in their 30s. And we had students in their 40s too. And all of my friends in, uh, that went during the same time of me, they now all have jobs in wildlife or ecology, evolution. Some of them, I was in an ecology and evolution department, so some of them were not necessarily interested in wildlife biology or conservation work. So they were all successful. So it's really never too late. So what about if you are like completely in another area? Like um, I'm talking with somebody and they have a degree in French. Like, is it too late for them to go back and get another degree? And did they, you know, waste all that time? I don't believe in, in that in general. I believe that everything helps 
get you closer to where you need to go, even if it does seem off track. But no, again, it's not too late. So one of my friends, she's now a professor at Elon University in North Carolina. She had her degree in art and Russian studies. So she did have to go back and get some extra coursework. She didn't get another degree. I think she spent maybe a couple of semesters get, getting some science classes and some math classes that she needed to get to get into graduate school, but she did not need to get a whole new degree. So where, where you need to go is, again, figure out where you need to go. <laughs> Let me word that better. But the, the place that you need to start is figuring out where you want to end and the steps that you need to get to go there. So it's really not about your age. It's about your experiences. So if you do need to get a couple of courses, or maybe you have those courses, maybe you have math classes, maybe you have science classes to go into graduate school, then what you really need is um, some experience. And I can tell you that from being on the other end of things, you might think that people discriminate against age. I really don't think so. I, I think that is probably a belief that, that, that you have, but it is not a belief that I see on the other end. Because like I saw in graduate school, we had lots of students in their 30s, 40s. In our lab, we have had volunteers who were older. Now they weren't necessarily going at it for a career, but I mean, they did great work. And from our perspective, really having somebody who has been out in the workforce, even if they have a job that is not related to wildlife biology at all, I totally think that you can spin and market that towards your advantage, especially with so many science jobs um, having to do, they usually have some component of communication in them, so knowing how to write well. A lot of these entry level jobs are data entry, and if you're in like an office job, um, I mean, you're probably doing things like managing databases or entering client information. I don't know what people do in normal jobs, but a lot of those skills can transfer over. And I would say that it could even make you more competitive because people will see you as being more mature, more responsible. You're physically older, but you've also had that job experience. So you'll have to figure out the jobs that you want and then where you want to go and then try to fill in those gaps to be able to get where you want to go. So I have this tool that I created. It's the job tracker. It's a spreadsheet and it is basically a way for you to study the job market and organize your jobs so you can understand what is needed for those jobs. And you can use that to try to narrow in on a, an area of interest for you. So if you decide that you want to work in birds, for example, that um, you might have the educational experience, but you need to get some of that other experience, you can start contacting organizations or people that you um, want to work for or volunteer for to get that additional experience to make you more competitive. Before we end, if you guys have questions, you can post them. Before we end, I do want to add that something you do need to think about being older is finances in this career. This field does not pay a lot. This field has not um, caught up or has not kept um has not been at the same rate as other fields in terms of increasing salaries. It's kind of remained stagnant. And as I'm sure you know, things are more expensive nowadays. So if you're older, if you have a family, really use that job tracker and do check the salaries of the different jobs. And if they don't post them, see even if you can call to get information about them. Because um, you got to survive, you got to live, you got to eat. And like I said, a lot of these internships and experiences, a lot of times they're volunteer, which is unfortunate, but it's not changing yet. Um, even when you do have your degrees and you do have those initial first jobs, they are very much most likely going to be temporary you are probably going to have to move around a lot your first few years. So even if you have your master's degree, some of my friends with master's, 
they moved um, or they had temporary jobs for, for three years. I know one person who had temporary jobs for three years until she got her first permanent job. So if you are somebody in your 40s and you have kids or you want to have kids or you have a mortgage you have to pay, that's something that you really need to consider and to decide for yourself if it's if it's worth it to to switch over to to this career. Unfortunately, it's a, it's one of the things that we need to think about. But even if you are young, I I recommend you think about that too because um it's yeah, it's just tough out there, and that's a reality of the situation. Okay, Laura asked about the job tracker spreadsheet. I will post it here um, when I'm finished. Actually, I can post it right now, but it is on my website, which if you go to fancyscientist.com, you'll find it. Let me see if I can get it up. Yeah, so I recommend looking at the jobs you want now. That is the number one. Thing you need to do. Okay, so I am going to end this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Again, if you have questions, um, just let me know. I'm, I'm here for you guys, and thanks for watching. Bye.